Hey, everybody. My name is Joseph Jacqueline, and I am a board member of the Murder Accountability Project, also known as MAP. I'm also a retired sergeant from the New York City Police Department. I'm the former commanding officer of the Bronx Cold Case Squad, adjunct professor, the author of two textbooks, and I am also the producer of the YouTube show, True Crime with the Sarge. Welcome to your tutorial on the Murder Accountability Project. What, what can you do with the Murder Accountability Project data? Well, there's lots of things you can do. And this is perfect for law enforcement looking for cases that might be connected or pattern cases, dare I say, which we could also say serial cases. But there's also for reporters, journalists, and academic researchers. And of course, the public at large, including the true crime community. There is lots of data involved in this. I'm going to show you quickly on how to do your own queries, how to look for cases, look for clusters, and look for things that might be attached to other cases, because that's what this is really about. The data is there, it's open for you to use, and I'm going to show you quickly exactly how you can do it. So I'm now going to walk you through the exact process on how to search for cases on the Murder Accountability Project's website. Now, the first thing you need to do is go to www.murderdata.org, which is right there at the top of your page. We recommend that you use the Chrome browser to do so. And once you are on the home page, you click on search cases and search cases will now open up into the supplemental homicide report from 1976 to 2022. Now we're in the process of updating the site. We're going to have as many as we can updated as soon as possible. So just be patient on that end. Now, the question is, why do you want to do this? Well, if you're a police investigator, detective, or cold case specifically, or police executives, and you want to see if there are anything uh, patterns or serial cases that could be happening within your jurisdiction, this is the way to do it. Now, the idea behind this is that, you know, you want to look into cases that could hold the key to the one that you're investigating. So it's important to do a search like this and be able to determine maybe something is going on that went undetected. So I'm going to go through a real life example with you. I've been following the Long Island serial killer case for years. And we do know that they have made an uh, arrest. They have arrested a suspect who has now had six charges attached to him. As an, and as we know, everyone is innocent until proven guilty. However, if you want to dig deeper into this case to see if there are any other potential cases that might fit the MO that you're dealing with or the person you're dealing with, this is how you do it. So we're going to take a look at, you know, specifically ages and ranges and try to see if we can come up with some uh, a query that can show us exactly what's going on. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go to this uh, little bar here. I'm going to click on it. And I'm going to put 1981, which would put our suspect into the late teens and starting in the early 20s, since we don't know exactly what's happening. And we also want to narrow this range down to 2013 because things got awfully quiet on Long Island at that point. So as you can see, as each time you do something, your graph and everything will, will dis, you know, start to disappear and show this. You see the two colors on here, red and gray. Red meaning that those are open cases. Now we know we're dealing with New York, so we click on this. We're going to unclick all. Let me go back, and then we're going to click on New York. And these are all the New York homicides that are open and closed from that time frame. Actually, looks like our little time thing kind of went off. Let me just fix that. Okay. Now, the next thing I want you to do is go to county. Now, the two counties that we're talking about are Nassau and Suffolk County, because that's where the crimes have been predominantly happening. But there are two other counties that are attached on Long Island. Uh, some people don't realize this, but Brooklyn and Queens are on Long Island, it's just that they fall under the jurisdiction of New York City. So right now we're going to concentrate on Nassau and Suffolk. So I clicked on Nassau, now I'm gonna scroll down. There's Nassau, make sure it's still checked. And now we're going to check on Suffolk County. There it is, we click on Suffolk. Now I have both Nassau and Suffolk homicide reports from 1981 to 2013, and you can start to see the red and the grays. I'm going to start narrowing this down even more. So let's go to weapon. I'm going to unclick all, and then I'm going to go back in, and I'm going to use other or type unknown. And the reason why I'm using other 
or uh, type unknown is because the manner of death, as we know for these victims, is homicide. However, the cause of death, they don't know in most of the cases of what, what happened to these victims. So it's important to make sure you check that. Now, you could use any kind of parameters you want, depending on what you're doing. If you're looking for somebody who's has been you know, stabbing people, then that's what you're going to choose. So I think you kind of get the idea what you want to do with this. The next thing I want to do to help narrow down my focus is I'm going to go to the victim's uh, sex. And I'm going to just choose female for this query. Now, I understand that... You know, there's a, a there's the Asian male doe who was found in women's clothing. I understand that, and I can understand that there could be potential victims from the Long Island serial killer that could be males. But right now, the overwhelming majority of these victims are women, and that's what I want to focus in on this. Now, if you notice here, you got these two red you have this red line and the gray line. The red line is the one we're going to concentrate on because that is the one that shows us how many cases are there in the system. There are 45. So I clicked on it. And then I want you to scroll, scroll all over. So it says keep only, exclude. And then you see these little this little box. I want you to click on that. And this will open. So once you have this tablet opened, you can go to show fields, right? Make sure all is collected. And before you download it, I want you to go to click on the left here where it says full beta. Before you do anything else, I want you to go to the show fields and just click all. Now you have all of the data that the FBI has collected for you in regards to these cases. Now, I'm just going to show you quickly about some of the things that you can do once you have this tab open before you can even download it if you want, right? Now, everything can be downloaded into either an Excel spreadsheet, into a number sheet, or you can do it into the Google software also. This data here becomes really important to you as you're investigating these cases. Now, remember, the data that we have in here is anonymous. We don't have the victim's names in here. So that you would now have to do an extra step and try to put together from, let's say, doing Google searches or newspaper searches in order to actually get the victim's name that we're going to be talking in here. Now, if I was doing an investigation on this, I would be going to specifically like the year. And I would click on this and I would go to sort ascending and it shows you now it does it automatically, right? So just like if you're good at Excel, you'll be good at this and you can start to see some of the clusters or some of the clumps that come together. Now, if you take a look at even in the middle over here, this 2003, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all right, these cases become really interesting to me because we know the Gilgo 4 disappeared within those time periods. So you, that's just something that you would do. And I would also maybe go to Suffolk County, Nassau County, and filter those out and make sure that you have all of the information that you need. And then, of course, when the time comes, you can download it. And then what happens is it'll download that information right into where your download folder if you're using uh, Windows, if you are using uh Apple, like iPad or uh, a Mac like I am, it'll go right into your browser. So that's how you do the search. Try to duplicate this exact search that I just did so you get the feel for it. And then if you have any questions or you're having trouble, let us know and we'll try to help you out and answer it out. Until then, we'll talk to you soon.